Hello everyone. Well, today I'm going to be unboxing, assembling and taking a first look at this Vax Rapid Power Plus carpet washer. There are two models in the range. This is the top model. For around £20 less, you can get a model that doesn't come with some additional tools that this has. This also comes with some extra solution, I believe. Okay, there is some assembly required before we can use this machine. So let's get it unboxed and assembled. Now, this is model CWG RV021. Comes with a two year guarantee. Make sure you keep proof of purchase and register it with VAX in case you need to claim under that guarantee. And of course, you can go to VAX's website if you need any after sales service or you need any spare solutions or any spare parts for the machine. Okay, so. Typically, with most carpet washers I've unboxed on my channel, you only get a small sample size of solution. So, as I always advise, buy another, at least another bottle, a full-size bottle of solution, so you can continue cleaning. This will clean probably an average-sized room, but it's not going to do all your house. So, stock up on solution when you buy your cleaner. We've got the instruction guide here. And illustrated on the front is the red model, which is the model lower down. As I said, the machines themselves are identical. Quite a straightforward instruction book here. Well explained and nice illustrations. And of course, there's a, an illustration showing you the various features and functions of the carpet washer. Now this is the spin scrub hand tool. This is the tool that you don't get with the base model. So if you think it's worth paying the extra 20 pounds for this and a couple of extra spray bottles that I will show you, then it's up to you. But as I said, the machines are the same. It has a single spin scrub brush that will rotate at speed when it's connected to the hose because apart from cleaning carpets, you can connect the hose and do your upholstery and stairs and car interiors. So basically this will spray the solution onto the surface. The brushes will agitate the solution and then you suck it up through the middle of this nozzle here and it's clear so you can see all the dirt coming up. This is a post treatment. I'm not sure it should come with a spray somewhere, but that doesn't have a spray. It should have a spray. So it's a post treatment and it's sort of like um, a scotch guard type thing. So once you've cleaned, you can spray the surface and it's supposed to help prevent resoiling. Also in the top, this is a little brush attachment that fits to the other nozzle that you get supplied with this for doing your above floor cleaning. There should be also a little crevice tool inside here. Sad to see that's using polystyrene. Obviously the, the cleaner needs to be protected during transit, but uh, it's not very environmentally friendly. Many manufacturers now just use cardboard packaging. Here is the clean water tank. Now with this particular model, you don't even have to measure out the solution because you have a separate water. So the cold, or sorry, the warm water, you don't want to put boiling or very hot water. Normally hand hot water is sufficient. That goes into the main tank up to the max fill line. It's quite a large capacity. It's over four liters. I'll confirm the exact capacity during the video, but I'll put all the details below the video as well. This side is where you pour the solution and you pour the solution in neat. You do not dilute the solution. Just pour it in neat. No measuring required because the machine will measure the solution for you. With this model, which is a feature I like, you have the option of using rinse. So you can turn the dial and the machine will only dispense clean water if you want to rinse your carpet or upholstery after you've washed it. That's always a good idea. So there's that. Here's the handle, which obviously will require assembling it to the machine. The screws are connected to the top of the handle in a little bag there. 
This is nice to see. You get a little storage bag with a hook so you can hang that up in your cupboard. And a little fastener to secure it. All right, there's the spray that we need for the post treatment solution. This is the other nozzle that you use with the hose. This particular one is fitted with some rubber sort of brushes to help give you a bit of agitation. Again, it's clear at the front so you can see the solution being picked up. I like the fact that you can take the front off on this model. So this little button you press here and then hopefully that should come off and then you can rinse that in water. Some of these nozzles on various carpet washers I've tested don't come off and they can become very gunked up. Uh, so having the facility to be able to take it off, that's very good. This comes off as well. So you can change this brush with the other one that I showed you earlier. We get another spray because also included with this model is a pre-treatment. So any stubborn stains, any high traffic areas, any stains that have been on your carpet for quite some time, you can pre-treat about 10 minutes before you start washing the carpet and that will help to start loosening the stain before you go over it with the vax. Another little bonus tool with this model is the spraying crevice tool. So that's ideal, you can use that in your car for getting in those really tight spaces, but also anywhere in your home where you've got a very narrow area to clean, you can attach the spraying crevice tool to the hose and do all those small areas. And here is the hose. And I believe it is 2.5 meters long. So I'm not sure if it's quite long enough to reach up a standard flight of stairs. It probably won't. I will check that when I do a full demo. It does mean that you can do at least half the stair and then you'll have to put the machine at the top of the stairs. But obviously take care when you're working with the machine above you. You don't want to be pulling it down on top of you when you're cleaning. So this is the hose. This end attaches to the cleaner and this attaches to the port, which allows the solution to go through this pipe, through the hose, and to the little sprayer there. So you can attach the tools I've just shown you to the end of this hose here. Okay, I think that's everything apart from the cleaner itself. So you just lift it out, it's quite heavy. And of course, when it's full of water, it will be heavier. Right, there we go, that's the rest of the cleaner. So, let's get this assembled and we'll take a closer look at the other features. The handle fixes into the cleaner using two screws. All you have to do is insert it over this post and do up the two screws. Now the coloured end, whether it be blue or red, depending on model, faces towards the front. So you just locate it on here, push it down and then attach the two screws. Make sure you don't over tighten the screws. There we go. Next you can fit the clean water tank. Simply locate it on the cleaner like this at the front. Push it back until it clicks into position. There are two hooks on the cleaner to store the 8 meter cable. A lower fixed hook and a swivel top hook. The swivel top hook allows you to release all the cable in one go. Now that the VAX is fully assembled, I'll take you on a quick tour of the machine to point out its various features and functions. This is the underside of the VAX Rapid Power Plus featuring five spin scrub brushes and two fixed side brushes that help to clean up to the edge of the carpet. Now these spin scrub brushes rotate at high speed when the machine's operating. The solution flows through them and then the brushes agitate the solution and all the dirty solution is picked up using the nozzle here at the front. Now there's a few advantages of this system. It's not belt driven, so you've not got an area, like some carpet washers, there's an uncleaned area where the belt's located. But with this system, you have more or less a full width clean across the width of the body. Also, another advantage of these, these brushes pop out. You just need to pull them fairly firmly 
and you can rinse that and clean that under running water. If you want to do a more thorough clean, if you've got pet hairs wrapped around it, you can actually take this clear part off as well and each individual brush comes out so you can really give it a thorough clean with no tools needed. The nozzle at the front of the machine is clear so you can see all the dirty water being sucked up so that helps you judge how many more times you need to go over the carpet because it's always advisable once you've done a couple of wet passes i.e. having the solution flowing you must go over the carpet a few times with no solution in order to remove all the dirty water. Now again another good feature of this machine this nozzle is completely removable you just have to lower the handle first and take out the dirty water tank that unhooks with this little latch. You just pull the tank out. Then you can remove the nozzle from the machine just by pulling it outwards and you can give that a thorough clean, rinsing any loose debris that's caught in the nozzle here. But I would always recommend you thoroughly vacuum your carpet before you deep clean and that will avoid too much of this solid debris being caught in the nozzle. Especially if you've got pets, do a thorough vacuum first. So once that's cleaned, that just pops back in, all fairly straightforward, and then you just lock the lever closed. This Vax carpet washer has a quick clean mode which means it uses less water and solution and according to Vax your carpet should be dry in around 45 minutes obviously depending on the type of carpet. This is the dirty water tank that has a capacity of 4.7 litres which is larger than a lot of carpet washers of this type. To remove it for emptying you do need to release this blue latch at the bottom and then you can just lift it out by the handle. You can either empty the dirty water by removing the grey stopper and then tipping it out or you can release the clip and take the top off, it's up to you. The advantage of being able to take the entire top off the dirty water tank is you can get into it to give it a really thorough clean from time to time. The lid can also be cleaned in water and this black piece here is your filter. Now that comes off and you need to keep the filter clean because the filter will trap any loose debris such as pet hairs or anything that you haven't been able to vacuum up. This will just rinse under running water and you may have to pick off some of the debris and leave that to dry. Underneath the filter you'll see the float valve. Now the valve will cut off the suction when the tank is full. You'll notice a change in tone of the motor and you'll see that it's not picking up any solution. So turn the cleaner off immediately and empty it before you continue your cleaning. As I showed you earlier in the video, this is the clean water tank and it has the same capacity as the dirty water tank, 4.7 litres. To release it, there's a button at the top. Now you can carry this to your sink to fill it. And obviously, as I said before, one side you put your water, VAC suggest up to 40 degrees, nothing hotter than that. And the other side you pour your neat solution. You've got the dial at the front as well, so you can select wash. And then if you want to rinse your carpets, you select the rinse cycle. The rinse cycle will also work when you're using the hose. At the back of the cleaner, you'll find the foot operated on off switch and the handle release pedal. The solution release trigger is located at the top of the handle. Before I do a very quick demonstration of this carpet washer in action, I'll just show you how you fit the hose. There's the hose port here, which you need to open. And then you locate the hose with the solution tube at the front. So pop it in the hole and then you twist it clockwise until it locks in position. You then need to open the solution connection flap here and then you just push the grey end into there until it clicks into position and then you're ready to use the machine for above floor cleaning. All the cleaning tools fit onto the end of the hose in the same way. You simply insert the hose until it locks into place and then to release the nozzle use your thumb just push up on the plastic part here and you can change the tools. Okay so I've filled the clean water tank with warm water and I've emptied the sample bottle of cleaning solution 
into the solution tank here. So I'm just going to clean this small area. We'll see how dirty the water is after the first use. And then don't forget to subscribe because I will be doing a further video with this machine showing you the tools in use and also showing how it copes with stains. So let's get cleaning. During the cleaning, the float valve activated, so I have to empty the tank. Now, the thing is, it's not full, but it has produced an excessive amount of foam. You'd expect that if the carpet had been previously shampooed, but as far as I know, this is the first time that this hall carpet is having a deep clean. So because the valve has shut the suction off, I do need to empty it and then I can just finish off the job. But most of the dirty water will be in this first tank. So we'll take it to the sink and I'll show you how much of the dirt has been removed from the carpet. I would recommend the use of Defoma in your dirty water tank, which would prevent all this excessive foam. You can buy it in liquid or powder form, and you just simply put a little bit in the dirty water tank, so as it's entering the tank, it's not foaming up like this and causing the float valve to rise before it should. It also prevents any foam from getting into the motor, which you don't want, because it can shorten the life of your carpet washer. But under all this foam, you can see it's quite a lot of dirty water. I'll be showing you some Defoma in action when I do another demonstration of this model. So to empty, we're just going to remove the stopper. And incidentally, after you've emptied it, make sure that this gray stopper is properly in place. Otherwise you'll lose suction and you'll find it's not picking up the dirty water. So let's, that away. let's give it a go, see how dirty this is. So as you can see from that small area of carpet, and I've not quite finished yet, that's pretty mucky. The carpet didn't look very dirty at all, did it? But it's surprising how much dirt a carpet can hold on to without you noticing. So I'm going to just rinse this out because obviously it's a bit foamy and I'll continue the job. But that's the end of the demonstration part of this video. I finished cleaning the hall carpet now and after washing it, I went over it again on the rinse cycle and also went over it several times to extract as much of the dirty water as I could. And I must say it seems to be pretty effective at removing the waste water. It is damp obviously, but it shouldn't take too long to dry. Obviously results will vary according to the weather and the type of carpet and how many times you go over the carpet yourself. So, this is the second batch and you can see in there under the foam more dirt has come out of this carpet and considering it's just a very small area this Vax has managed to get a lot of dirt from this carpet.
So that's the end of the video, the unboxing, assembly, first look and brief demonstration of this Vax Rapid Power Plus carpet washer. It's very noisy, I will say that about it, but hopefully the noise won't bother you when you see the results it gives on the carpet. So, as I said, there'll be other videos, or at least one other video following on this machine. But in the meantime, if you have any comments or questions about this cleaner, please comment below and I'll see you all soon for the next video. Bye for now.